Hello, everybody. My name is Danny Richter. I'm the Vice President of Government Affairs for Citizens Climate Lobby. One of the things that I love most about baking bread is the opportunity for surprises. The caramelization on the crust is always different. The crust splits in unexpected places, and sometimes you get a gas bubble on the inside that makes buttering your bread uh, a little bit, a little bit difficult, but nonetheless, it's delightful. The past weeks have provided four separate surprises that I want to talk about today. Namely, two endorsements for federal carbon pricing legislation from the Business Roundtable and the Electric Power Supply Association. One plan by the American Petroleum Institute, or API, to release a carbon tax proposal that was leaked in the Wall Street Journal. And one report focusing on a carbon price from the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget. In short, these are all from unexpected voices. Now, why are these organizations unexpected messengers? And what do I mean by an unexpected messenger? Well, an unexpected messenger is an organization or person that generally has not played in the climate space and that would not be expected by members of Congress to be advocating for anything climate related. This is significant because research indicates that it is unexpected voices such as these that lead to politicians elevating a policy issue above other priorities and scheduling it for scarce floor time. And let's talk about each of these individual organizations uh, for a moment. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, uh, they're the one that had the report making a pitch for deficit reduction using carbon price revenues. And they are a nonpartisan nonprofit group led by a stellar list of pol political and business notables from both sides of the aisle. And it has street cred with many traditional conservatives. Uh, I'm not sure that I need to say much about the American Petroleum Institute, but it is the largest trade body for the oil industry. The Business Roundtable is an association of chief executive officers of America's leading companies. And the uh, Electric Power Supply Association is the national trade association representing America's competitive power suppliers. It is effectively a natural gas association. So why does this help us? As I said, interest diverse coalitions on an issue sing, signal to members of Congress that something is different in significant ways that makes it more likely those priorities backed by the co coalition will move forward. Now let's talk about reconciliation. Members are back from a two week recess this week and this next five weeks has been highlighted as critical for Democrats to work out an agreement on reconciliation. If it's going to happen, this is a critical time for it to happen. From that standpoint, these four unexpected messengers are particularly well timed, especially since the two senators whose agreement is needed to push forward on reconciliation, Senators Manchin and Cinema, are among the moderates most likely to be swayed by these unexpected voices. So these developments help with the prospects of getting a carbon price and reconciliation. However, I do want to be clear, there is still a very low probability of a carbon price being included in reconciliation at this point. We witnessed last month with energy cost surges in the wake of Russia's invasion on Ukraine on top of inflation, a retreat from any kind of energy tax from Democrats calling and with they, they were in fact calling for bad ideas like repealing the gas tax. So while this is helpful in this moment, I wanna be transparent. It is still unlikely that a carbon price is part of any reconciliation package if indeed reconciliation package is arrived at. I also, don't want to mince words, it's a great idea to include a carbon tax and reconciliation. A dividend can take care of any concerns with respect to elevated energy costs from the carbon tax with virtually all other developed economies and some developing economies, including China, already having a carbon price in place, including a carbon tax and reconciliation ensures that the United States is on the inside of any climate clubs that may form and legally demand accountability from carbon intensive imports to within their borders. And the European Union Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism is Exhibit A. It is on track to start next year with reporting requirements, although no revenues collected, and to begin collecting revenues in either 2025 or 2026. Once the European Union does this, it will be much easier for other countries or groups of countries to copy what they do, and we can very quickly find ourselves on the outside looking in. So even aside from the climate benefits of putting a price on carbon, these geopolitical considerations and GDP considerations, I think are a really strong argument for including a carbon price in the current reconciliation opportunity. 
So to conclude, I don't know why this is happening now, but I'm glad it is. But I'm not sure of the timing or the legislative vehicle. The bottom line is that these four unexpected voices will make it easier for a carbon price to pass in the United States. Between international pressure and now support from these organizations, there's more incentive than ever on Congress to price carbon pollution. That's a good thing. Thanks for tuning in.